So in my previous videos, I've been running through some of the functionality that is in a fork of Seed Signer that I've been developing that allows you to do things like add secure element backed seed storage to your Seed Signer setup. I've actually been doing some continuing work on that fork and adding new features. And what I want to show you today is a new feature that allows you not only to have secure element based storage, but also to be able to do the transaction signing in a secure element as well. Basically what this means is that you can move your private keys onto the smart card and actually run your seed signer in a fully stateless mode, never even needing to load private keys onto it to do things like review and sign transactions. And this means that even if you have something malicious on the micro SD card, you could actually still safely use your device. So in this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes, you know, for this functionality, why it matters, uh, run through a quick demo of using it as well as talk about some of the new features I'll be adding into this fork going into the future. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now, I'll just use the big screen seed signer for this just because it is easier. And I'll just run through the process of creating a new recovery seed, of backing it up onto a seed keeper card, as well as initializing a SATO chip card with it, allowing fully stateless operation of this device. So in terms of creating the recovery seed, it's the same process for normal seed signer. So we just say new seed. And for the sake of speed, I'll just take a picture. Uh, just for the sake of it being a demo, I'll just skip that for now. So that is our seed. So I'll just say done. So the functionality that I've shown in all my previous videos basically would be where we go in here and we just say backup seed and then we just say to seed keeper. And basically we just shove the seed keeper card in there on this one's just AAAA for the sake of demos. Obviously, you'd make it something stronger than that. And pretty much, we can just give the seed a label and then say tick. And it's saved the seed onto the Seed Keeper card. And basically, then if I just power it down, the seed now only exists on this Seed Keeper card. This has been wiped. And if I want to then go and use this, step one is to load the secret from the Seed Keeper back into the Seed Signer device. The new thing we can do is we can take our SATA chip card, we can plug that in, and we can go down into tools, go into smart card tools, SATA chip, and we can say initialize with seed. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to firstly prompt us to give this SATA chip card a pin. This is the pin we'll need to make transactions using this card, whether we're using Sparrow or the uh, seed signer. So we can set it to anything we want. I'll just choose A, 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 and say tick. There we go, so card uninitialized, it'll prompt us to enter a pin, so we'll just put in the new card pin, A, 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 card setup complete. So basically we just select the seed we want to import, which is this one here, so it's an importing secret, and there we go, seed imported. And this is a quick spot where I'll pause to say the key difference with the SATA chip cards is if you are using a BIP39 passphrase, you can't just reapply the passphrase every time you use the card. You have to have the seed plus passphrase sort of together and then initialize the result onto the card. Uh, so if you're using a passphrase, just keep that in mind. You have to do it when you're copying it onto the card. So as of right now, this seed actually exists in three different places, in three different sort of ways. So firstly, it is sitting uh, in a Seed Keeper card, just in a storage sort of way. We can load that up with the Seed Keeper app uh, with a uh, Seed Signer or whatever. Uh, it's also just sitting in memory on this seed signer device and it's now been initialized onto this SATO chip card here. So here is where the difference happens. So now normally if you had a seed signer and you wanted to say pair that with a wallet, you'd go select the seed in memory, you would export the XPUB and go from there. But again, that requires the seed to be on here. So I just power that down. We're not going to worry about that and turn that back on, we're now going to restart with a blank seed signer device. And I'll show you how we will use this statelessly with this SATO chip card. Okay, so we are back. And basically now we have just started with a freshly booted seed signer. If we go into seeds, we can see there is actually nothing in there. So the first thing we want to do is want to pair the uh, wallet that's on this SATO chip with some software. So what I'm going to do is firstly insert the SATO chip card and go down to tools, smart card tools, SATO chip, and I'm going to export XPUB. 
uh, I'm going to choose single SIG. So it's connecting to the card. Firstly, to see what script types this card supports. This one here supports native SegWit and nested SegWit. Legacy has been disabled uh, on the seed signer menu, so it won't show me that. So I'll just say native SegWit. And look, I'll just say I'm going to export into Sparrow. So basically over here in Sparrow, I'll just say file new wallet. Okay, so over here, I'm going to say I have an air-gapped hardware wallet. I will say that I have a seed signer and I'll just say scan. There we go. And over here on the seed signer, I'll say yes, I understand there is a privacy leak. I've just got to put in the card pin, so push, and that was AAAA. So basically now it's connecting to the card and it's going to export the XPUB. There we go. So there are the details and I can just say export XPUB and it will show it to me on the screen. And I'll just crank the brightness up on there. And there we go. So Sparrow has picked that up. So I can just say apply. I will say no password. And basically, once I'm done, I can just say okay. All right, so the next thing it's gonna do is actually ask me to verify the address just to make sure I've paired with Sparrow correctly. And uh, this is actually not a feature that is in the official seed signer uh, repo, but yes, it is in my fork. It makes it hard to screw things up. So if we're going to receive, and basically I say scan. Now I'm just gonna scan the QR code that Sparrow showed me. And basically what it has done is it has scanned uh, that QR code and made sure that it matches uh, the addresses that the seed signer thinks should be corresponding with this wallet we just exported. So now we know it's exported successfully, we haven't messed anything up, so we are okay. I'll send some Bitcoin to that wallet because I've actually just already done hardware verification on that address so I can be confident that it's safe to use. And uh, there we go, we can see the transaction is there. Now, in terms of actually making a transaction, the workflow is pretty straightforward. So I'll just put my tip address in there and I'll just say return. And look, rather than send the max, I just wanna show you how the change works. So look, I'll just send 10,000. There we go. So now I'll just say create transaction. I'll finalize for signing and I'll say show QR. So now over here, on the seed signer, uh, I'll just say scan, just like I would with a normal PSBT. There we go. And the new option that you'll see is there's the option to use a SATO chip card. So I can just press OK. Obviously I have to have the card inserted for this. I'll put in the card pin and then say tick. And basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna connect to the card. Uh, it's gonna pull the XPUB uh, and allow it to parse the PSBT and work out if the change is all correct. So that will just take a moment. This will actually take a bit longer than the standard build. So there we go. So we can actually see the transaction details here that we can confirm on the screen. Uh, we can make sure that it shows us the PSBT math. We can review the recipients. So that's just sending back to my tip address. And we can actually see it has verified the change address uh, by pulling the XPUB off the card uh, on demand as it passes the XPUB. So now I can just say next. So I can say approve PSBT. So what's going to happen here is it's going to pass the transaction from the seed signer onto the smart card. The smart card will sign it and then pass it back. So I'll approve PSBT. That takes a moment just to sign it on the smart card. And there we go. So that is our transaction now that I can just say scan QR. And there we go. So now we have the verified transaction back in Sparrow. And again, we can actually just review these outputs and make sure they are what we expect and make sure that nothing sus has gone on on the seed signer. Now, the key thing here is that all of this was done without any private keys leaving this SATO chip card and touching this seed signer at all. Uh, as we can see, you know, there are no seeds in there. They don't need to be. Uh, and the great thing is, even though I did show you the export XPUB process all at the start, you don't actually need to do that every time. You know, once you have paired it with your wallet software once, uh, basically it will automatically look at the PSBT, it'll automatically query the XPUB on the SATA chip card. And if it is a card that corresponds to the wallet uh, for the transaction, it'll just automatically verify the change uh, and work it out for you. So that is pretty much that. And I've actually mentioned this several times before, but I'll just mention it again, which is that you can't actually load your seed from the SATO chip card back 
into your seed. So the key difference to understand here is this SATA chip card is not a backup. You cannot recover your seed words back off this SATA chip card and load them back into here. Whereas this Seed Keeper card can function as a backup, though it is unable to sign transactions. So while on a surface level, these two modes of operating do look very similar, they are fundamentally different. And I've actually gone through this in more detail as well as looking at the uh, different architectures, different hardware wallets use in this video over here. Uh, actually, the only other thing I mentioned is the Address Explorer. So that also does just work. So if you go into Tools, go into Address Explorer, uh, you can just choose to load from Sato chip. And basically, again, we just put the uh, pin for the card in, choose the wallet type we want, hit tick, and that will just give us, it'll export the XPUB onto the device and allow us to browse uh, all of the addresses for this wallet. There we go, so that's the fingerprint. So that shows us the fingerprint and all the other details. I can choose all the receive addresses and if I go back over here into Sparrow and just go into the addresses tab, uh, you'll see that all of these addresses in here match all of the addresses in here. Uh, again, allowing you to easily verify uh, receive addresses uh, on the device. Actually, the only other thing I'll quickly mention in terms of the uh, SATO chip functionality is that the uh, 2FA uh, process, enabling 2FA, is not something that works uh, with the uh, seed signer. So if you have enabled 2FA on your SATO chip card, that still only works with the sort of Electrum SATO chip uh, version, which will essentially give you a web-based 2FA for the uh, blind signing transactions. Uh, make sure you leave 2FA off if you're going to use your SATO chip with your seed signer. Actually, the last thing I'll just mention in terms of recovery options is how to use this SATA chip card even without a seed signer. So basically, if we just have a USB smart card read, I've got a SATA chip branded one, but any would work. Uh, we can just shove our smart card in there. So this is that wallet I previously had in Sparrow. So what we can do here is we can just say replace, and then we can just choose that we have a SATA chip. And I'll just put in the pin there. There we go. So it's actually, I'll just back up existing wallet first. I won't worry about a password. So now we have the same wallet that is now expecting to talk to a SATO chip and we can see our transaction is still there. And if I just want to send the rest of those funds back to my wallet, send the rest of those funds back to my tip wallet, I can just say create transaction say so finalize for signing. And this is where you'll notice what blind signing looks like. Uh, basically here in Sparrow, if I just say sign uh, and say sign, it'll basically just prompt me for the pin. And then basically this card will just accept whatever transaction Sparrow has just passed to it. So uh, I'll just say broadcast transaction. So obviously there I was just blind signing it and sending it back, but I just wanted to show you how you could just use that SATO chip, you know, just directly with Sparrow if you want to, uh, if for whatever reason you didn't have access to your seed signer. And uh, again, we're happy to uh, take the risk of just blind signing and uh, going from there. But this ability to do transaction signing on the smart card, I think is actually a really good use case for the SIM sized uh, smart cards in that basically you can just have the uh, SIM sized smart card reader hat, uh, same design as the other ones I've got. You can solder it directly onto the Raspberry Pi and actually end up with a board that has the same form factor as a normal seed signer but has either secure element backed storage with Seedkeeper applet running on the card or secure element backed signing running the Sato chip one on there. If you have a DIY card, you can actually flash the applet from both of these onto one card. You can't do that with the retail ones, they're kept separate. And uh, you know, for most people, you probably do want to keep them separate, though I could see an argument for doing something like setting one of these up as the uh, signer and also storing a multi-sig descriptor on the smart card itself, even if the actual seed words themselves are not stored on there. And I'll just briefly mention some other new features as well as some stuff that is in the pipeline to keep an eye out for. So the first thing is for people who like their Trezors, basically now there is full Slip39 support, though you do have to turn it on in the settings. Basically we can turn Slip39 seeds on, and basically then you can actually do things like restore Slip39 seeds onto these cards, create new seeds, as well as being able to do things like backup shares onto QR codes, uh, seed keeper devices, write them down, whatever. 
And if you're someone who had a Trezor and has lost it, you can actually reconstitute your Slip39 shares on this device and then restore that recovery seed onto something like a SATO chip if you want to be able to securely use that. So again, a good recovery option for Trezor people who may not have access to a Trezor device in a pinch. Uh, you can do that with your seed sign now. Now, the other thing you'll immediately notice if you've been running my fork and using these uh, GPIO smart card reader hats is that smart card performance has improved dramatically. So basically there's some tweaks under the hood that optimize things here a lot and has basically halved the time required to do things like store uh, and retrieve seeds off SeedKeeper uh, and things like that. So using these with smart cards is now a much better user experience than it was even on the previous release. And the last thing I'll just mention is the GPG tools and a lot more functionality will be coming here in the next release. Previously, uh, it just had the ability to do things like verify file signatures and stuff like that, just like in uh, Sparrow, to be able to GPG verify that your uh, wallet software or whatever is fine. Whereas the GPG functionality that will be coming uh, allows you to do things like generate uh, private keys on device, just using BIP85, loading them off seed keepers, uh, signing messages, signing files, uh, using them to initialize smart cards running smart GPG, the whole shebang. So if you're someone who enjoys PGP related things, encrypted messaging, file verification, and so on, keep an eye out for the next release. So there you go, some options to extend the functionality of the Seed Signer project to allow you to have not only secure element backed storage of your private keys, but also to be able to keep them secured in the secure element while you are using them, allowing the Seed Signer itself to be completely stateless. You know, I'm really happy to have sort of pulled this off in that the ability to have not only uh, hardware backed storage was one of those early goals that was talked about with the Spectre DIY device, uh, but to be able to have fully on card signing was sort of one of the uh, you know, coming soon kind of features that never really made its way into Spectre. So I'm really happy uh, to be able to have that now available on Seed Signer. If you'd like the idea of being able to use your Seed Signer with this sort of smart card functionality, you can either use a USB-based smart card reader, an NFC reader, as I covered in my video here, or you can buy these sort of GPIO, just plug and play stacking headers on my store here, and now on a number of stores across different resellers across Europe. So that is really great to see, or you can just, you know, build one yourself. And uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, you know, rather than just spam the main Seed Signer Telegram group about it, um, you best bet is to actually just join the sort of smart card fork telegram group and ask questions there or just leave a reply in the comment section i do my best to reply to all of them other than that stay safe thanks for watching i hope that was helpful hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content i make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble if you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover just leave a reply